Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Kitchen Design Experts. This is the channel that tells you everything you need to know about kitchens, about kitchen design and about kitchen appliances. Now today we're going to be talking about combination ovens, one of these things. And we're going to be telling you about a huge mistake people make when they are planning them into their kitchen. So combination ovens, uh, we're not going to be talking today about the function of them. I'm not going to go on about what a fabulous machine they are and how you can effectively cook a jacket potato in 30 minutes. That's going to be the topic of a future video. Today we're just going to be talking about how to design one of these machines properly into your new kitchen design uh, and how to avoid a huge mistake that so many people make. Well, first of all, just a quick resume about a combination oven and what it is. Basically, it's a single appliance that houses an oven, a grill and a microwave. And you can generally use the oven and the microwave in combination together, which makes it a very flexible machine. Generally, the 45 centimetres high, a little bit shorter than the height of a single oven. And the actual oven aperture is the same size as the top oven of a double oven. So they are a fabulous appliance, they give you lots of flexibility, and I have to say they are extremely popular, we do many of them. But they are by nature a very expensive machine. And if when you're designing one into your kitchen, you make a mistake with it, it becomes a very expensive mistake. So, what is the problem with these machines? Before we talk about the problem with combination ovens, I just want to give you a quick update on what is the difference between a combination microwave and a combination oven. Now a combination microwave is essentially a microwave sized machine that would sit freestanding on a worktop. It's a microwave that's been converted to have a, an oven in it. It's not a very good oven generally, it's not a multifunctional oven or anything like that. And the grill is a little quartz type grill like you get in a caravan, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, an infrared grill perhaps. And it's, it's just a microwave machine that's been adapted. And the door will open from left to right, generally to the side. Whereas a combination oven is oven size, proper grill, proper oven, and then it's got a microwave adapted inside. But the biggest difference between the two, apart from one being a better machine than the other, is the door. As I said, on the microwave, the combination microwave, the door opens to the side. But on the combination oven, the door drops down. And this is the problem that I'd like to talk about. When you're designing these machines into your kitchen, there's usually three locations you can consider putting them, possibly four. Uh, we'll rule out the fourth one first of all. Some people build them underneath the worktop. Okay. But bearing in mind you've got to press a lot of buttons, turn a lot of dials, actually bending down to press those buttons and dials is difficult. So it's really a last resort to build one of these underneath the worktop. So let's look at where they can go in the housings. You could just put a combination oven on its own in a tall pantry larder cupboard like this, say, positioned where you want it, no problem. That will work fine. Many people will take a single oven and they'll put the combination of them to one side. So they'll have two housings next to each other with a single oven, a combination of them, and perhaps a warming drawer underneath the combination of them so it makes it the same height as the single oven. Again, that's no problem. But the problem arises when you decide to put your combination of them over the top of a single oven. And that's what I want to talk about today. Right then, here's your combination of them over the top of your single oven. The door drops down, the back of the door is hot, and whoever uses the machine has to reach into the oven cavity over the top of a hot door. Now obviously, this is crucial to make sure that people don't end up with their beautiful new fitted kitchen with burnt elbows and arms. Uh, so it's absolutely essential for a kitchen designer when any, anybody mentions a combination oven, to get the main user, the person that uses this machine the most, to stand in front of them, put their arms parallel to the floor, and get a tape measure out to measure what that distance is. 
because you have to, as a kitchen designer, make sure that the oven door is lower than their elbows. Otherwise, your client is not going to be able to use this very expensive machine. And as I said at the beginning, that will be a very expensive mistake. So that is what we have to consider every time we sell one of these. And I'd just like to go through those different heights and how you can adapt the housings to suit the different heights of clients. And whilst I'm talking about heights of clients, we always work out how tall a client is, but that doesn't necessarily give you an indication as to where their elbows are in relation to the floor. To give you an idea of me and my son, when we sit down next to each other on a chair, we're the same height. But when we stand up, he's six inches taller than me. It's got to do with leg length, body length, etc. So just getting the height of the client doesn't always give you the height of their elbows. That's the important thing to measure. So working out the height for your combination oven. Uh, the designer should do this for you. But if they aren't even bringing the topic up, you bring it up. You make sure that your kitchen designer is aware of your elbow height in relationship to the back of your combination oven door. If you're dealing with a custom-made designer kitchen, then there shouldn't be any problem. Because when you have a custom-made designer kitchen, the company will be able to make the bottom section of drawers and the top section of door any height you want to suit a client. That's what we do. We have our custom-made housings made to suit the individual client. So we may, this particular, you might not be able to see at the bottom here, but this particular uh, housing has got a deep drawer, a shallow drawer, uh, a single oven, and then the combi microwave. Where you are measuring everything, you've got to make sure you allow for the thickness of the combination door as well, adding that to the height of the oven and to the height of whatever is underneath the oven. And then of course you have a plinth at the bottom, which you have to take into account of as well. But as I say, with a custom-made designer kitchen, that shouldn't be a problem because the housing will be made to suit you. The problem arises if you're buying an off-the-shelf mass-produced kitchen where they have generic type housings and they don't take into account the particular height of a client. And I would suggest that using the lowest setting possible with a generic oven housing and the average height of the person that uses a combination microwave the combination, sorry, combination oven, the combination oven is going to be set too high for the average person. So you're going to have to do something. So what can you do? If you look at this elevation drawing here, I'll chat through with you the alternatives that you've actually got. These are three typical settings that you'll get with a mass-produced kitchen. Uh, the, the housing to the left has got a deep drawer and a shallow drawer, then the single oven and combi oven. Uh, the one in the middle has got two deep drawers, single oven and a combi oven above, and one on the right has got a door below as opposed to two drawers, but it's actually the same height as the two deep drawers. Now then, I have to say, if you look at the size of the put on here, I've taken into account that the plinth at 150 mil, and on the drawing to the left, you see that the uh, deep drawer and shallow drawer come to 455 millimeters, and then the single oven's 595, then you've got the thickness of the door when it drops down on the combi made through microwave. That means that in that particular design, which is fairly typical for many housings, the actual top of the, the door of the combination oven is 1200 millimetres from the floor. Now even that, even that is too high for I'd say at least 75% of our clients. Moving along to the two deep drawers, or indeed the door on the right hand side, you can see the two deep drawers are going to add a, an extra height to everything and they're going to end up with a combination oven door 1380 millimetres off the floor. You need to be six foot tall at least to be able to reach into that machine. And I see so many people's designs where they're using that type of housing and the lady who uses the actual machine herself is only five foot two high. It's absolutely impossible for us to use it and it causes so many problems. So, what can we do? Look at this plan here. Now you aren't going to be able to get your kitchen manufacturer, if it's an off-the-shelf mass-produced kitchen, to make the housing any differently. But what you can do is discuss this alteration with your kitchen fitter. It's very simple to do. 
and you need to talk it through with them. Basically, what you want to ask them to do is to take that shallow drawer that's underneath the oven and place it above the combination oven. And that will then allow you then to drop the oven and the combination down so it sits on top of just the deep drawer. You'll gain about 140 millimetres approximately by doing that. Now I appreciate that that drawer panel that sits above the combination oven is of no use. You've lost a little bit of storage space. But what you've gained is access for the bulk of people to what is a very expensive appliance. And in my opinion, it's worth losing that little bit of space so you can use your combination oven. Consider doing this, talk to your fitter. It's very simple to do and it will solve the problem for you. That's it really. That's the problem I was going to talk about. That's something I see time and time again in other people's kitchens. Complaints I hear about somebody who's had this expensive combination oven and they can't use it. They can't use it. It's vital that you are aware of this and you either speak to your kitchen designer or you speak to your kitchen fitter to ensure that your combination oven is set at a height that suits you. Uh, the last thing I would like to mention about these, I suppose it's a mistake that people do make with them, more likely the kitchen designer stroke fitting team make, is these particular machines, uh, they generally are about 3.6 kilowatts. Uh, they need a 32 amp feed really, uh, you can't just plug them into a normal 13 amp plug. You, they, you have to be costed for uh, a cooker ring main to be run into your kitchen to feed this machine. Make sure that when you get your itemised installation costs that the cooker feed is included for one of these machines. Many times it isn't. Uh, so that's another thing to check up on. As I said at the very beginning, we're going to be doing a full video on how these things work. Yes, how you can do a jacket potato successfully in 30 minutes, that'd be great. Uh, and that will follow at some future date. I hope this has been of help to you. I hope I've managed to save some major disasters for you if you're planning your kitchen at this moment in time. Uh, and please look out for more videos that we do. If it has been useful, you've liked it, please subscribe. We'd be very grateful. And any comments, any comments at all that you've got, bang them in the comments box. We absolutely promise to get back to you. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.